If we are given a system of inequalities, we will call the feasible set all of the points that will satisfy every inequality. In order to be in the feasible set, the point must satisfy every inequality in the system. Let's take a look at an example. So consider the system 5x plus 3y is less than or equal to 15, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12, and x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0. A point in this feasible set will have to satisfy all of these inequalities. So let's take a look at the point 1, 1, 1 for x and 1 for y. To check to see if it's in the feasible set, we're going to check it in all the inequalities. So for the first one, if we take 5 times 1 plus 3 times 1, that's equal to 8, which is less than or equal to 15. Second inequality, 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 is 5, which again is less than or equal to 12. Then 1 for x is greater than or equal to 0, and 1 for y is greater than or equal to 0. All four inequalities are satisfied, so the point 1, 1 is in the feasible set. To look at a point that's not in the feasible set, let's take a look at the point 7, 0. 7 for x and 0 for y. This point is not going to be in the feasible set. If we check it in the first inequality, we have 5 times 7 plus 3 times 0. This is 35, and that is not less than or equal to 15. So because it fails this one inequality, it's not in the feasible set. Even though, if we try the last two inequalities, 7 for x is greater than or equal to 0, and 0 is greater than or equal to 0, both of those are true, it doesn't matter. It fails one inequality, therefore it's not in the feasible set. This is the key point. The point only has to fail one of the inequalities for it to not be in the feasible set. To get an idea of what the graph of the feasible set looks like, we take our system of inequalities and graph them all on the same set of axes. So let's look at the same example. We have four inequalities, 5x plus 3y is less than or equal to 15, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12, and then the standard x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. So we graph these as we graph um, all inequalities. We graph the straight line and then we shade one side of the line. So we plot our two points and then draw the straight line. When x equals 0, y is equal to 5. When y is equal to 0, x is equal to 3. Plot those two points. It's 0, 5, and 3, 0. We draw the straight line between the two. And then we have to check to see which side of the line is going to be shaded. For this first inequality, if we look at the point 0, 0, 0, 0 is usually a good point to check. Then 0 is indeed less than or equal to 15, so we shade the side, not on the 0, 0 side. We plot the second line the same way. We plot our two intercepts, and we get the intercept 0, 4, and the intercept 6, 0. So plot the two points, 0, 4, and 6, 0. Draw the straight line between them. We then check the point 0, 0, and 0 is indeed less than or equal to 12, so the feasible set will be that side of the line. We cross off the other side. The last two inequalities deal with the y-axis and the x-axis. x greater than or equal to 0 means we're looking at all the points that are on the positive x-axis, that are the, all the points over here. So we're going to cross off everything to the left of the y-axis, everything where x would be negative. Similarly, 
if we want y greater than or equal to 0, we're going to be looking at everything on the positive y-axis, which means we have to cross off everything below the x-axis. Any point not crossed off now is the feasible set.